Hey everyone, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm sharing with you three instant pot or slow cooker freezer meals that are dump and go. So my name is Kristen Hills and I am one of the six sisters from the website sixsisterstuff.com. Now every Sunday we usually share an Instant Pot recipe with you or Instant Pot recipes with you. So today I am making some delicious dump and go freezer meals that can go in your Instant Pot or your slow cooker. So I'm gonna walk you through putting the freezer meal together and also walk you through cooking the freezer meal so you'll see three different recipes made and cooked. All right, you guys are ready? Let's get cooking. All right, so the first freezer meal I'm making is cilantro lime chicken. Now if you're gonna cook this from frozen, you're gonna cook it for 25 minutes or if you're gonna cook it thawed, you're gonna do it for 20. Now if you're gonna cook this in the slow cooker, you're gonna cook it for six to eight hours on low. I would suggest going low on this one. So first you're gonna add about two pounds of chicken into your freezer bag. Now I'm using tenderloins, you can use chicken breast, just try and get it around two pounds or so. Next you're gonna dump in a can of corn. Now I left the liquid in the corn because we always like a little bit of liquid when we're cooking in the Instant Pot. Then you're gonna go ahead and get a can of black beans. Make sure that you rinse and drain it. Then you're gonna just dump it on top of your corn. On top of that, you're gonna add one can of your Rotel tomatoes. Now I, go, I went ahead and left the juice in here too because again, a little bit of liquid is great. Next, you're gonna add about one cup of your favorite salsa. I like to use Herdez salsa, but you can use whatever you want. Now I've chopped up a half of an onion. Now I only had a red, a red onion available and so that's what I'm using is a red onion. Then to give it that delicious cilantro flavor, I did about a half a cup of cut up cilantro. Now you don't wanna forget the lime part of it. So you're gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of lime juice. Now you can use fresh limes too. Just don't hate me for using the jarred kind because it just makes my life easier. Okay, okay. Now to add a little bit of seasoning, we're gonna add about two teaspoons of cumin or cumin, however you want to say it. And then add two teaspoons of chili powder. And then I just added about a clove or I guess one teaspoon of garlic. Now you are welcome to add salt and pepper. I like to add salt and pepper after it's all done cooking so I can kind of taste how that comes together. But you can add it now if you want to. So right now we're just gonna close it up. Make sure you're gonna suck all the air out of it so it will freeze well. And there is a lot of food here. It feeds about six to eight people and it freezes easily after you've already cooked it too. So win-win for everyone. All right, we are all done here, so I'm just gonna close it up and stick it right into the freezer. So I love dump and go freezer meals because you literally get to dump the whole entire thing in and then cook it. It makes life so easy. Now I usually like to make two or three recipes of the same recipe at the same time because it, it's just so easy throughout the month. So go ahead and put the lid on. Go ahead and make sure that the seal is tight and you're gonna turn that little knob to sealing, not venting. Go ahead and push the pressure cook button or the manual button and we're doing 25 minutes because my chicken is frozen. If it's all the way thawed, you can do 20 minutes. Now when the timer is all done, go ahead and turn that little knob to venting. When all the pressure's out, you can lift your lid up and I'll just warn you right now, it smells amazing. That cilantro, oh, so good. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a little while, you know that I love using bear paws to cut up my chicken. It's just easy for me. So I'll put a link in the description for you of those bear claws. They literally are my favorite and I use them all the time. All right, so when your chicken is all shredded, go ahead and put it right back into your Instant Pot. You want kind of the, the inside of the chicken to also have a chance to get those juices around it. And then my favorite thing to serve this on is tortillas. I love some type of chicken taco. So I just put this on a mini tortilla and then you can add all the ingredients that you guys like on tacos like sour cream, tomatoes, avocados, more cilantro, whatever you guys like, go ahead and put it on. 
Oh, and cheese. You can't forget cheese. Anyways, I like to put all the toppings on the table so the kids can kind of pick and choose what they want on top of their tacos. All right, I hope you guys like this recipe. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so the next recipe is Italian steak marinara sauce, and it's amazing. This one I'm gonna actually serve on some zucchini, but you can serve it on rice, on potatoes, on literally whatever you want would be delicious. So it cooks in the Instant Pot for seven minutes, or you can do it in your slow cooker on three to four hours on low. And if you love freezer meals, I finally invested in one of these stands and it was the best thing I ever did. So if you're doing freezer meals, go ahead and grab one of these. I'll put a link in the description for you. Okay, gonna hook up my bag and we're ready to go. All right, so we need some cut up steak. Now I like to use these packages of steak. I need two pounds, so I needed two bags full of them. You can also cut up your own steak, have it cooked ready to go because it will make it a whole lot easier. All right, here we go. All right, so my this is pre-cooked steak that is frozen, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump both bags into the freezer bag. Next, I cut up an onion into kind of, I don't know, medium-sized chunks and just dumped it in. Next, you're gonna add about two cups of fresh spinach. I highly recommend using fresh because using the frozen stuff just doesn't taste as good. So fresh spinach in there. Then you're gonna add one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. On top of that, you're gonna add one teaspoon of basil. Then you're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Now you can add more salt if you want to, but I feel like one teaspoon is good here. Then you're gonna add about a half teaspoon of pepper. And then if you wanted to have a little kick, you can add a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I like the red pepper flakes, but my kids didn't necessarily love the heat that it brought, so it's totally up to you. So on top of that, you're gonna add about one cup of your favorite marinara sauce, and then one can of Hunt's diced tomatoes. Then you're gonna take your tomato can and fill it about halfway full of water. And then just dump that in to your bag. Oh wait, one last thing, I cannot forget the garlic. So I added about one garlic clove or about a teaspoon of garlic. Okay, I think we're all good. So I'm gonna take it off and go ahead and zip it up, get all the air out of there. You don't want air in your freezer bag, so try and get as much out as you can. Now there should be enough liquid in there to pressurize. If you're a little nervous or if it's really frozen, you can always add another half a cup of water and then push the saute button when it's over just to get that extra liquid out. But it's always better to have a little too much liquid than not enough so you won't get that burn notice. Now this recipe is all thawed ready to go. I would highly suggest putting them in the, in the fridge about 24 hours before you're gonna cook them because they will cook faster and you will have liquid. So you, chances are of getting the burn notice are a lot slimmer. Anyways, you can just dump the whole thing into your Instant Pot. My favorite thing about making freezer meals. Then you know the routine, go ahead and put the lid on, make sure that it's on correctly. Make, turn that little knob to sealing, not venting. Then you're gonna push the pressure cook or manual button and we're just going to seven minutes because my steak is already cooked. It only needs to cook for seven minutes. Same with frozen, if it's frozen, still cook it for just seven minutes because the meat is already cooked. When it's all done, go ahead and turn that little knob to venting to let all the pressure out. Once the pressure's out, you can open up the lid and you guys, it's, this is one of my favorites, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> now, if it is a little too soupy for you, go ahead and push the saute button and get some of that liquid out. But for me personally, I like it like that because if you're gonna put it on noodles or rice, you kind of want it to have that sauce. Now I sauteed some zucchini and this on top of the zucchini was actually amazing. If you're a zucchini fan, you have got to try this. It is one of my new favorite things to eat. All right, this one was my kid's favorite. It's called lazy lasagna. Now you only have to cook it in your Instant Pot for about seven minutes or you can do the slow cooker for about three to four hours on low. Now I'm switching things around a little bit, so I'm gonna add some things that I usually add last first. So I'm gonna add about one teaspoon of garlic, about one onion. Again, I just had purple onions, so if you had normal onions 
or yellow onions, you can add that too. But I had purple, so that's what we're using today. Now, while I was chopping up the onions, I was also browning some hamburgers. So I have about one pound of ground beef here that I've cooked and I drained out the grease and I'm just throwing it into the Instant Pot. You can cook it in your Instant Pot or just over the stove top. Next, I'm gonna add about a one cup to one and a half cups of your favorite marinara sauce or spaghetti sauce or whatever you like to make with your lasagna. Then I'm gonna fill that container with two cups of water, mix it around a little bit and just dump it in because you need a liquid in there. Now right now you can add salt and pepper. I actually like to add my salt and pepper at the very end, like right before I serve it so I know how much salt and pepper is actually in there. So go ahead and add it. If you're not going to, go ahead and zip it up and make sure all the air is out of your container. Now if you're making this in a slow cooker, you're only gonna add one cup of water. Just one, not two. Now for the best part, you just get to dump everything into the Instant Pot or slow cooker, if you're using a slow cooker. <laughs> now, if you're using an Instant Pot, you're gonna go ahead and dump your pasta into the Instant Pot right now. If you're using a slow cooker, please cook your pasta on the stove top because you will have really mushy noodles if you try and cook it in your slow cooker at the same time. But Instant Pot, you can do it. So you're gonna dump in one pound of your favorite pasta. You could even like rip up or I guess break apart lasagna noodles if you want it to be lasagna, but I like I like these little noodles because they're just cute. All right, so you're going to press them down into your sauce. Now, we usually have about two and a half, three cups of water, so I'm gonna actually add a half a cup of water on top of the noodles. You just wanna make sure all the noodles are touching a liquid. Now all you have to do is put the lid on, make sure that it is sealed correctly, then you're gonna take that little knob and turn it to sealing, not venting. Go ahead and push the pressure cook or manual button and then we're just going to seven minutes. When the timer's done, go ahead and flip it over to a quick release and release the lid. Now go ahead and mix it around a little bit. It, there will be more liquid on top than there is on bottom, but once you start mixing, it's like a perfect texture or I guess perfect liquid amount. Now if it's too liquidy for you, go ahead and push the saute button and you can dissolve some of that liquid, but for me, it worked perfect. Now this is where it gets fun because you can add whatever you like. I'm gonna add about one cup of cottage cheese. You can also put ricotta or literally any kind of cheese you like, but I like it to be a little more creamy, so add in some cottage cheese. Now I also like adding fresh spinach while it's hot. You put in the spinach and you mix it all around and it wilts it and it's absolutely amazing. I mean, the nice thing about this recipe, if you like specific lasagna, if you like sausage in your lasagna, this would be the perfect time to add it in. I also, when I like serving this, I like to put some cheddar cheese on top with a little bit of cilantro and it's delicious. My family loves it. Now, if you want more freezer meals, I have 15 freezer meals that you're going to love that you can make in about an hour. So go ahead and click that link right there and I will see you guys next time. See you later, bye.